Friday, everyone, and welcome to the last of our Stemets reactions, day eight. So today is our final day of reactions. Uh, my name is Julia, and I will be your host for today. So buckle up, and um, we will soon be able to enjoy the sun. We've got 30 minutes ahead of us. Um, thank you to anyone that is joining um, and who joined us over Stemets reactions over the last two weeks. Um, we've been sharing new videos each day. Tuesday through Friday for you to watch um, at your leisure over our over on our zine. Uh, we welcome you to join us live at 4 p.m. to have a chat about what you loved and learned in the video that you, you tuned into. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed your time at Stemet Cinema. Uh, but if you did miss out on any, you can access all of our replays via the link that we'll share in the comments now. Um, so we are just about to post it in the comments. Um, we'll wait for that to come through. Um, but each day of reactions, video uploads will cover a different theme. So there's a bit of something for everyone. So today, the theme is to the future. So get ready to share with us um, as you also hear from our panel. Um, you know, we're gonna, we're happy to read out comments, get, um, answer your questions that you may have, discuss things that you want to discuss. And again, thank you for tuning in, and we hope that you enjoy this final session that we've got today. So a little bit of housekeeping before we uh, get started. Um, in First things first, if you'd like to ask a question during the session, you are welcome to leave a comment. So just pop a comment out, and our team will make sure that we um, get to it and answer your question. Uh, secondly, please note this session is being recorded and your comments will be saved. So be mindful if you have your full name displayed um, for security reasons. So just be kind and respectful as well um, as you comment, as this is a safe space for us to all learn from each other. And last but not least, uh, completing feedback at the end is super important. Um, so we can keep delivering these sessions that serve you and make sure that we always improve the experience that you're getting from us. So please do take some moments to do this at the end. Um, and then without further ado, we will move on to the main part of this session now, which is a discussion on the topic to the future. And we're going to hear from some of our stemets today, uh, some of our elite stemets, may I say. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our, our mini panel today. So we've got Alice and Isabella joining us. Um, hi there. Hi, Alice. Hi. Um, so we've got Alice first up. Um, Alice is in school. She's interested in industry, engineering, science, and maths. Um, Alice, tell us a little bit more about yourself and maybe tell us what's your favorite food as well. So hi, I'm Alice. Um, I'm an aspiring F1 race engineer. I'm going to be doing maths, physics, history in September. And my favorite food, I would say, is kebabs. Ooh, good choice. I like that. Great. Lovely to meet you, Alice. Although I've met you like a hundred times now. Um, and next up, we've got Isabella, who is another elite stemet here. Hi, Isabella. Um, Isabella is in school. Her favorite subject is maths. And in future, she wants to work in maths and physics or in space. Um, so Isabella, tell us a little bit more about yourself as well and tell us um, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? 
Uh, so yeah, as Julia said, hi, I'm Isabella, and yeah, like Alice, I'm also in year 11, and next year I'm going to do A-levels in maths, further maths, physics, and then an AS in computer science, so sort of a half A-level. If I could only eat one food, that is a difficult question. It um, is a difficult one. If you don't know about that, then just tell me what's your favourite food, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to take it from a different perspective, I'm going to say sandwiches, because you could put anything in a sandwich, so if you had it as your only food, you'd still get a lot of variety while still having a healthy diet, so you could have, I don't know, an egg sandwich for breakfast, then something else sandwich for lunch, something else for dinner, you... You get a bit of variation in chocolate sandwiches if you want to eat chocolate. I think <laughs> that'd be the best way to get the most variety in life. Yeah, I'd say that's a very smart answer. Definitely. Um, what's your favourite food, though? I want to know. Uh, I think curry. I don't know. I just have good mm. memories of eating it. It's always hard to come up with your favourite food on the spot. It is. It is. Curry's a good choice, though. I like that. But thank you both for joining me today. Um, we're going to discuss um, the three videos today. So, um, again, um, our panel will lead the conversation on the videos that we've seen today. And um, we will be talking about our topic today is to the future. So, Without further ado, we're going to move on to the first video, which is the junior video that was about Dr. Catherine Jones. Uh, so Dr. Catherine told Stamets about being an electrical and electronic engineer um, and her research into how we can use electrical power systems on aircraft. She told us about what it's like being a researcher and teaching students. Catherine joined Stamets making gliders. Um, to the end of the session. So she, she actually made the gliders with us as well. Um, so um, I've got a few questions that I wanna ask our panelists today. Um, first things first, and this is the question for both of you and whoever wants to take it first, go ahead. Would you consider a job in engineering um, and working, especially specifically engineering in aviation? I would definitely consider a job in engineering. I'm planning to do a degree in engineering. Um, maybe not like, maybe not aircraft itself, but maybe aerodynamics. Um, mm. They're quite closely linked. Nice. How about you, Isabella? I'm not really considering a degree, not a degree, a career in aerospace at the moment. But I remember when I was younger, I really was interested in it. I think it started from being scared of planes, as weird as that sounds, and then. I learned more about how they flew, so I stopped being less scared. Then I just got really interested in them, and I think if you find out how planes work, it is actually really interesting, because it seems like they shouldn't be able to fly, and it definitely is something really interesting. And now that I think about it, I completely see why I wanted to go into aerospace engineering a bit when I was younger, just because it is so amazing how there's how flying is something that's always interested humans, and it isn't necessarily something that you can do without assistance or anything. But then when you get to do it, it's amazing. So yeah, I definitely did consider it when I was younger. Awesome. And I know that Catherine in the video spoke about sort of hybrid aircraft. Um, did you know about this before watching the video? And what do you think about those hybrid aircraft? I knew a little bit about them. Yeah? Um, I kind of they were just floating around when we do various STEM bits at school. Um, I'm hoping they can be a bit quieter. I live over the flight path for Luton and I really don't appreciate when planes go past my house either really late at night or really early in the morning. And Bay is really cool, especially that flying is such a pollutant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's so funny because I live actually next to City Airport as well. So I get that noise just like you. So I really feel your pain. <laughs> How about you, Isabella? I'd say sort of add to the aircraft pattern. I I see planes going to Heathrow every day. I can't necessarily hear them, but sometimes if it's really quiet, you can hear them. And I would say, yeah, if they were a hybrid and they were a lot quieter, that would be quite nice because I know people who live a lot closer to the airport than me, and they say that they just get, they just stay up all night hearing the aeroplane. So I'd say, from both a noise pollution level and an air pollution level, hybrid aircraft definitely are and definitely are something we should begin to be using. And I think. They definitely are the future if we can use them because it makes such a difference in reducing the amount of global warming and climate change happening. But it will also just improve the lives of the people living around airports. 
and yeah. yeah i would say it definitely is the future if we can be able to innovate in that area mm -hmm. no yeah i totally agree with you i think that's really that's a really good point it is such a it's such an innovative concept and it's something that is so important um nowadays to kind of focus on so I really hope that um, people like Catherine and um, her colleagues are really, really, really working hard on kind of all these different solutions. Um, and the last question I had to both of you about this video before we move on to the next one is, um, is there any advice that you would give our audience considering a future in aircraft engineering after you've watched this video now? I would say the more general one for engineering is that don't be put off by the A-level maths and normally physics or chemistry that you need to do engineering. Um, don't be put off by it. Don't be put off if you're the first one in your family to do engineering or to go to uni or do anything else like that um, because it's such a cool field. And kind of with, with aerospace, um, it's so innovative um, and you've got so many different paths you've got yeah domestic flights that we saw we saw paris flew to cornwall um yeah. and then you've got um, <laughs> so that today questionable move but we, we move on um and then you've got literally the plan to go to mars that is a lot further than cornwall so it is it's so cool so as, as long as you love it you'll do really well in it yeah i think I uh, sorry, Isabella, I was just going to say, I think Alice got a good point in terms of don't let it discourage you in general. I think engineering is such a broad term and it's, not, it's, it's usually not really um, discussed so much at school and explored so much at school. And I think just like it's about having a go yourself and kind of re researching it yourself as well. Um, I would say building upon what both of you have said, if you are interested in engineering, the best thing to sort of do is probably take your interest don't rely on other people to s spark your interest and maintain it i would say at school careers advice seems to be very much tailored towards either being a doctor or a lawyer which is great if you want to be one of those two but if you don't it doesn't really help so i'd say if you are interested in engineering don't just rely on your school to provide opportunities or information for you because they probably won't and that it's not a good thing but it's what happens so Mm -hmm. I'd say just look up more about the area, look at what's happening in the news, what innovations are being made and looking into it more and then thinking how you could then get involved with those projects in the future. That's probably the best way to sort of immerse yourself in the world of engineering and see where you might go in the future and then use that to determine which specific branch you might be interested to going into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally um, agree. I think I think doing your own research is so key to engineering. Alice, you were going to add something. Yeah, um, as you were here, you probably know something about STEM Ats. Um, that's a lovely position to be in. And I've got to say about some amazing engineering stuff through STEM Ats. Um, but if you're UK based, we are lucky enough to have plenty of engineering documentaries on a night. There's plenty of you to, for you to choose from. Um, so I, I basically fell in love with engineering and kept going by watching the really random documentaries that Channel 5 likes to put out. Um, and they're actually really helpful. So if you are looking at engineering, um, our media are very good at engineering documents. I would say with what Alice is saying there, if you're interested in most areas of STEM, just go on BBC iPlayer and look at the documentaries. They're brilliant. I've spent too much time watching documentaries on them, but I think there really is something in there for everyone. And I think, I know there's a series called Inside the Factory. There are just so many things that show how different things work. And I would say, if you're even the slightest bit interested, watching a documentary really does help. So it just sparks your interest more. So I'd definitely recommend that. Yes, we love documentaries. We do love that. That's a great tip, both of you. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the next video because we're running out of time and we need to get through all of them. So the next video is the STEM session with Christina Pearson Rampiri. And that was a Q and A that we did um, we joined flight system engineer Christina to hear about her career in aviation. Um, she told us about what engineering is, how products are made and what her research involves. Uh, Christina explained how creativity comes into her job, the value of mentoring, becoming a chartered engineer and her business creating STEM accessories. So Christina is an amazing volunteer um, 
maybe either of you already met her at some point. I'm not sure. Or maybe we're there for one of these sessions. I feel like, Isabella, you might have been here for that session, actually. Yeah, if you see on the bottom right corner, that's me on Teams. I was on that. <laughs> Amazing. Love that. Um, right. So I think for in terms of this video, um, have either of you been involved in mentoring before? I have. Um, I'm currently on student to summit. That's quite exciting. Um, nice. You're doing the student to summit program, right? And how's that yeah. going for you? It's been brilliant. Um, so I'm doing it with Mercedes. So I've got a mentor within um, there and um, within the team, um, and it's been an amazing experience. I've learned so much. Number one about engineering and about F1, but also the soft skill side of it. Mm -hmm. I've also got to meet some really cool people. So I got to meet the head of mechanical design at Mercedes. Oh, wow. Um, so if any of you were watching the Monaco Grand Prix, you saw Bottas's wheel on that instant, and he was the person who's responsible for designing them. So it was really good to speak to him and various other people there. So if you get to plug shoot to up, if you ever get the opportunity to take part, I definitely recommend it. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that you're, you're, you're enjoying this program. And Isabella, have you ever been mentored before? I mean, it? it's a bit different. I am still, I'm starting student STEM at in a few weeks. So unlike Alice, I can't say what I've done yet because it's yet to happen. But I have been involved with mentoring within my school. So a few months ago, I was a mentor for some year eights in my school, just oh, nice. to help them with workload and pressures at school. And I think being a, on the other side of it, being a mentor rather than mentee, it was really interesting to sort of learn what's happening with year eights and how different it is but also similar at that age and i think it helps you build up a level of empathy for people who are younger than you who you may not otherwise really know much about and it made me realize these people might make a lot of noise outside your examples but they're not that bad they are really nice people and i think if you get if you get to know them then the yeah people probably aren't always the most respectful when you're doing your exams because they don't realize the wall is really thin but i think it was just really good to be able to through mentoring meet new people that you otherwise wouldn't get to meet and i think it just gives you a very different perspective of the world and i would say that is a really good thing and if you can get involved with mentoring either way as a mentor or a mentee i would definitely recommend it it just has benefits both ways yeah that's such a good point isabella actually um i think that a lot of people don't realize how much mentoring can be useful for both the beneficiaries, so both the mentee and the mentor. I think a lot of times what we see with mentors that, you know, um, come to STEMETS and are offering their uh, mentor skills to to mentor girls like, like yourself and Alice is that they actually learn so much from this process and they learn so much from um, women and non-binary people um, like yourselves and, and other people in our community. I think it's just amazing how much you get out of it, either end you're at, basically. Um, so that's awesome. And I'm so glad to hear that you're both involved in these um, initiatives. Um, so next question I've got is, who in aviation would you like to meet? Because Christina said that she'd like to meet Amelia Earhart. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right, but I hope so. Is there anyone in aviation that you would like to meet? If we can count aviation as the space side of it as well, I would love yeah. to meet Helen Sharman. Awesome. Uh, the first British astronaut in space. Mm, okay. What questions would you ask her? Or maybe one question? Um, it's like she was like, she went to space in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And being a woman in STEM then is probably, I suspect, was a lot harder than what it is now. Um, so I would love to hear like her experience of, of going through the 80s and 90s as being such a trailblazer. Yeah, that is such a good point. I think, yeah, she must have amazing stories about sort of <clears throat> even just being a woman in space and things that probably weren't being considered for her before she was before she actually came on and maybe pointed things out. But yeah, that's a really good one. How about you, Isabella? I just realised I muted and unmuted myself in one go, that that's not a good thing. I would say, like Alice, if we're counting space, just any astronaut, I think it will be really interesting to hear about their experiences in space, just because it's so different to being on Earth, because you don't have gravity, and just mm -hmm. what it would be like, and to see the Earth from above, that must be 
just a really surreal feeling. And I don't know if this counts because it technically hasn't happened yet, but it'd be cool to meet the first person to go to Mars just to find out how different it is to go to, than going to the moon, for example, and things like that. It technically mm -hmm. hasn't happened yet, but I think it would just be really cool to find out what is going to happen and see what Mars is like, because I guess the only way to fully explore it and see if there's life there is to send a human there to do proper analysis. Mm -hmm. Yep, very, very right, it's very true. Um, okay, uh, that's awesome. Well, Christina is one of our volunteers that kind of comes comes up a lot so if if anyone if if you guys enjoyed um the session with christina then feel free to to follow what we do because christina is definitely going to come back whether it's for an instagram live or another networking session things like that i'm sure that um alice and isabella you'll definitely get to meet her at some point as well um so last but not least let's move on to the third video before we close off for the day and for the week which is the um Technology for our Evolving World Tech Talk that Anne-Marie did. And that's going to be our career clinic video today. So our heads to met, Dr. Anne-Marie Maffedon, MBE, talked to you about technology for an evolving world. Starting from a VCR of the Lion King, um, Anne-Marie told us how she started Stemet. She gets us to think about what the future might look like and what tech trends like virtual realism we have now that might have an impact. Uh, Anne-Marie also got us to think about ethics in the future of technology and how inclusion and diversity will make a difference. So obviously that's at the core of what we do, why STEMETS exist. Um, so I think that is an amazing session actually. And actually a fun fact, um, that session is a session that Anne-Marie delivers to, to, to other people as well. So she talks about these types of things to sort of bigger corporation, bigger companies as well. Um, and so, and and the Stemets got an in, sorry, the Stemets got an exclusive session of that talk. Um, okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you both. Um, actually, this is a really good one. What technology that we have now do you think is most exciting for the future? Whoever wants to take that first. Um, I would say VR personally. Um, I'm sure lots of us have seen the new EE ad when they shaved someone's face from Art Snowden. Um, but also, as the Euros are starting today um, and the nation proceeds to sing It's Coming Home every day, um, I think the BBC are also going to offer what they offered at the last World Cup was that you could VR into the games. So obviously with the reduced um, amount of fans, that could be really exciting. And whatever happens with the new variant and whatever is like that, VR could be a great way to get people connected again. Awesome. How about you, Isabella? What do you think? I would say for me, it's probably AI because it just has so many different applications and loads of different things. So I think with working out anything, so predicting stock prices, predicting the economy, I think the AI can predict things in ways that humans can't. And if we can get it to work better than human better than it is at the moment with all the human input being required then that could be amazing it could potentially solve loads of our problems but i think at the same time we do have to be aware that there are many potential disadvantages to ai mm -hmm. so while it is definitely one of the most exciting from a positive perspective we also have to remember that there are risks to take with it and i guess VR doesn't have as many of those, although I'd say the benefits of AI, in my opinion, would probably be a bit more exciting. Do you know what? I think that um, what you just said, Isabella, applies to both VR and AI. I think that it's such huge areas of development for technology. Um, they're, they're so exciting, but at the same time, because they're so exciting, they need extra attention. And if we don't pay extra attention to them now and actually put in the right work now, it might become a risk or a problem later on. And I think um, you explained it very well with AI, but I think even with VR, you know, whether it, it, I think VR is very physical and it's got to do a lot with, with like also at the body. So I think if we don't anticipate things like feeling a little bit lightheaded or being in VR for too long, there's that disassociation disassociation from reality which is also really really risky so i think both of these i agree with both of you because i think both of these areas are amazing and are super exciting but really need people like yourselves um and the next generations to really really focus on them and work 
um, work towards making them very ethical as well. And I'm going to add what I'm really excited about is AR, actually, augmented reality. I think that is really, really cool. Very cool. Um, so coming back to the topic that Anne-Marie was actually covering, um, why do you think, and this is, I feel like this is kind of like an obvious question to ask at Stements, but why do you think diversity is so important for the future of tech? Um, so from my point of view, I'm a disabled young woman from a council estate. Um, on paper, people from my kind of ward, however they break it down, um, like I shouldn't be wanting to do what I want to do. Um, I think if we're not diverse and we're, if we're not inclusive, we're not going to like engineer these new things. They won't be accessible to everyone. Um, and if they're, if they're only great for however many percent of the population, there's no point having them. Um, and I think diversity and inclusion is something that is so vital in all sectors. Um, I know in STEM there is quite a lot of work towards it, but I think in all sectors from medicine to STEM um, to even sports, it's a really important thing. Amazing. I think for me, it would be, as Amru was saying in the talk, that if you get more people from more diverse backgrounds, then you get a wider range of ideas. So because you might have had different experiences in the past, you can then say different things based on the different things that you've experienced. And if you only have white men doing it, then as it is at the moment, on the whole, you don't really get a wide range of experience because there are different experiences within that but not really as wide of a range if you took it from everyone in society so i would say if you get it from if you get everyone feeding in then you get a wider range of ideas and then by using those ideas you can come up with even more ideas and without those then you not, might not necessarily be able to make big breakthroughs or massive breaks in innovation later but i think it also <laughs> goes just on the note of safety if you engineer a seatbelt just for 50th percentile men as the video says you're not going to be able to protect everyone it will just be able to protect some people and in a way if you only get a minority of society having their input in you're not going to protect the majority so i would say diversity is a case of making everything better but also making it safe for everyone mm -hmm. and considering all different perspectives and all different walks of life i think is what's the most important so you've both um, said it very well. Alice, you wanted to add something? Yeah, so um, kind of building on um, Isabella's like, it. there are some brilliant people in STEM who are white men and they do their job brilliantly. However, mm -hmm. women in STEM and minority groups in STEM have normally had to work so much harder to get to their want to be. And actually some people who are women in STEM or minorities in STEM have got some brilliant skills that they've, had, they've kind of had to have to get to where they are and I think we should be harnessing these mm -hmm. um, anyone who's faced some sort of adversity for something they can't change you do kind of there's something that is you, you kind of gain something that is yeah, really hard to describe right? it's like resilience but it's something mm -hmm. else and it's, it's really hard to describe mm -hmm. that makes you a brilliant person to work with within a team that is very 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 true very good point and on that note um we have now reached the end of our final day of stimmets reactions so thank you both so much for joining me today um it's been amazing to talk to you both as always i love discussing stem with you both um so please let's have a massive thank you for our amazing panel uh, for sharing their knowledge and uh, joining me today Thank you all for attending, for everyone that's watching us live and everyone that's watching the replay as well. You, We hope you found it fun, useful, and have enjoyed to the future. And this was our last session from Stimet Reactions this week. So please remember to complete the feedback to let us know how you found this particular session. We've got this on the screen for you now, and we're also popping it in the comments. Um, this is very important to us, and we appreciate your honesty. So it's bit.ly slash react. Um, don't forget that you can catch our replays on the zine at your leisure, and that will be stemets.org slash, uh, slash zine slash reactions. Um, this was our final session, so if you joined and enjoyed Stemets Reactions, we would really appreciate if you could fill out the feedback for how you found the whole week, actually, as well. So I've just talked to you about the feedback from this session, but there is also an end of, end of reactions feedback, I think. Um, and that 
feedback is bit.ly um, slash reactions feedback. I'm not sure if that will come up on the screen for us, but I will. we can also pop it in the comments. If someone from my team could pop it in the comments, that would be great. So again, for the end of week feedback, which is just a general kind of what you thought about reactions overall, that is bit.ly slash reactions feedback. And without further ado, like I said before, you can catch a replay on the zine at your leisure. And um, I would like to wish you an amazing rest of your evening and a awesome weekend. Thank you once again for joining us for Stemet's Reactions, folks. Alice and Isabella, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely weekend as well. Um, and take care and we'll see you soon.